Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today let's also welcome my friends back at freshstitches.com because today is the reveal day and this is what you've been working on for the last few weeks. We've been working on Mike the Monster. So if you've guessed what he is already, congratulations. If you've been in the dark and just realized now, say hello. And today you're going to be working on the eye. You're also going to be doing um, the assembly. You're going to be doing the body as well. And of course, you're just going to do some final touches. Now you'll notice that my version is wearing a little graduation hat. Thought mo you, I thought Monster, Monsters University. I thought, you know what, it'd be kind of cool. I just kind of made it up as I went. I did write the pattern up for you just in case you want to make your own little version. I did sew it to the top of his head too. So I got thinking to myself, you know, people carry around gnomes, take pictures. I think this is my new mascot to take with me when I travel because I think he's so super cute. He was even thinking about the crochet crowd cruises. You know, I might change his hat to a little uh, sailor's hat. That'd be kind of fun too. So at the end of this video, I'll tell you a little bit more on how to be able to submit your items because you have until the 29th of July in order to send us a finished photograph of your finished Mike the Monster in order to qualify for the fabulous prizes uh, sponsored by Red Heart Yards as well as the Crochet Crowd. The following tutorial in all episodes of this character's crochet along has been designed by our friend Stacy Truck, Amigurumi designer and author. We are thrilled to have the rare opportunity to teach and bring you a trademark celebrity character. Please be aware that the copyright and trademark laws associated to this character remain in effect. Your finished item is intended for personal use, gift giving and or supporting your favorite charity. Let's begin to work on the eye next and the eye is just a flat solid panel and again working in the back loops you can see that you'll have the effect of that going on and it's really really easy just to be able to follow along. So just grab your yarn that you want to use for the eye, preferably white if that makes any sense. Grab a stitch marker that you can have and let's begin and we're going to start off with chaining of two. So just one and two and now let's come back to the very start one and we want to put six single crochets into the starting chain. So one and two and three, four, five and six and I want to adjust that string. I kind of did a weird thing somewhere along the line. So we have that, we have six and what I want you to do is grab that stitch marker. Let's come up underneath the six because that will be our gauging as we go all the way around to be able to measure our rounds as we go. So once you have your six, just pull everything back tight and let's begin our next round. Okay, round number two is really easy. We're just going to start and coming into the first back loop. We're only going to work on the back loops on these things and we're going to put two single crochets into each as we come all the way around. And this is going to double the, the circle or the eye. And essentially you have at this last round we had six um, stitches. So when you put two into each it equals 12. So I'm using that stitch marker to help me make sure that I don't lose count because we're going in a continuous round without any slip stitching and so it becomes a little bit of a, a task if you try to find your start and stops. So once you come all the way around, please move that stitch marker up again into the underneath of the final one so that you know where that is and let's move along to your next round. Okay, round number three is very easy. Just starting in the first one, we want to put two single crochet into the same one and then the next one is just going to be one single crochet by itself. The next one will be two single crochets and the next one will be one. So you have two and one. Okay, two and one and two and one and two. And and one is your final. If your final does not end with just only one sitting by itself, you know that something is wrong with your count. So you're, um, you should always end up with the final number of the single, 
crochet just sitting by, by itself at the end. Never two into the same one in the end. So let's move along to round number four. So let's start off round number four. It's the same configuration. So the first one is gonna get two single crochets and then the next are gonna be by themselves. So one and then two are by themselves. Okay, so there's the repeat pattern. So we're gonna have two in this one and then the next two will be by themselves. So one and two and then two into the same one and the next two are by themselves. I didn't grab the full back loop. I only grabbed a part and apply it. Will make a difference if I let that go. So again we have two and then the next two are by themselves. So this is essentially if you're not comfortable growing circles this is essentially how circles are grown in crochet. Just matching the configurations up to grow them evenly. Um, most of the circles are actually always divided into into eights or twelves and uh, because of that you have to grow it on all sides equally. Okay and so here is my final two going in and so essentially there's the stitch marker. See how I have two scro uh, singles left? That means that I have two singles left anyway. So that means that I'm on key for keeping this in balance and it's all about balance for this particular project. Pull that slip, mar or slip marker through, that stitch marker through and you're good to go ready for the next round. So I'm not gonna make you watch the whole round of this one. The first one is going to be two and then we have three by themselves. So that is your key um, repeat. So one, two and three and then put two into the next and then three and please do that all the way around. Okay welcome to round number six. This is your final revolution of the eye itself and so what we have is that the first one will be two into the same one. So two and then we have four sitting by themselves. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is two into the same one. So please do that same configuration all the way around. When we come back we're gonna be uh, just uh, finishing it off and leaving a very long yarn tail so that we can sew this on to the project when we're done. So again two single crochets together and then four by themselves repeating the pattern all the way around. When you get all the way around just stop and end and then just pull the loop through and just keep your extra long yarn tail available for you and then just put this aside because we'll be using this afterward. So here's the inside. You can just safely cut your yarn strand on the inside and on the on the actual project what we do is that we put a little bit of fiber fill in behind the eye to make them continue to pop out when it's sitting onto the body. But right now let's just put this eye aside and we'll worry about it later. Let's begin. We're gonna start with doing the body of the head. Let's just create a slip knot to begin with. Now you'll notice that the body is not a particularly round item. You'll notice that it's like an egg shape and it's not, you shouldn't expect the, you should expect the unexpected I guess you should say is that it's, a, it's kind of an unusual shape so you can't just assume that you know everything and you really do need to follow the pattern. So let's say begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot. That's chain two and we're going to um, single crochet six times in the beginning um, chain that you started with. So that was two, that's three, that's four, and five and six and again just like we've been doing before just grab a stitch marker or a piece of yarn. The yarn is faster. Just grab a piece of yarn just pull it through and that will mark off your number six and just pull everything nice and tight and let's move on to the next round. Let's go to round number two. Just like all the other parts of this body is that we are operating only in the back loops only. So let's start off with our first one and going two single crochets per back loop. Okay there are six currently back loops right now. So that means that if you put two into each you'll end up with twelve. So by doing the back loops it's creating a texture look to the, the body. That's why we're doing it and when you come to the stitch marker which you can see there is that we want to uh, put in our two and then the final one of the two that's when we want to put the move the stitch marker up so we know where it is. So let's move along to your next round. 
Okay, we're gonna start round number three. In round number three, we're gonna put two single crochets in the first one and then one single crochet into the next. And we're gonna continue to repeat that all the way around. So we're gonna have two and one. And then we're gonna have two and one. Just like that. And then two. And one. Okay, and we have two and one. Now the reason why I went all the way around is that this is the final one. This is one. You will always end up with the last. So if, even if you have two together and then there's six in a row, the last one before you have to do two together again should be in position. So this will be because you've already done two together here. So it should the last one should always just be a single crochet, which is the last one of the of the grouping that you would do. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's uh, begin our next round. Okay, now that you caught on to my drift, here we go. Round number four. Single crochet twice in the next stitch and then two into the uh, one into in the next two. So the first one's gonna get two single crochets, and then the next two are singles by themselves. And then the next one is two. Okay, and continue that same configuration going all the way around, and then the next two are by themselves. And I'll meet you back up at the stitch marker, I'm ready to move on. Let's move up to round number five. Round number five is two into the first one and then there's gonna be three single crochets by themselves. So one, two, and three and then the next one is going to be two into the same one. So here's that configuration. So you got two into the same one and then three by themselves. Continue that all the way around. Let's start off round number six. The first one's two in the same one and then we're going to have four sitting by themselves. So that's this whole revolution of that same configuration. That was three and four and then the two together, or sorry, not two together, two single crochets into the same one. Two together would mean that I'm decreasing but I'm not, I'm increasing. So two into the same one and then four sitting by themselves and please do that same thing all the way around. Okay, round number seven, we're about to start and it's two together or sorry, two in the same one, sorry. And then it's going to be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then put two into the same one. Continue that same configuration all the way around. This is, uh, we're gonna start changing up, it up a little bit just after this round because now we're gonna start uh, making it more oval shape at that point as far as like the going downward. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So remember two into the same one and then five by themselves. Let's begin round number eight. Round number eight is just single crochet all the way around. So now we're gonna start changing the shape a little bit to become more oval and uh, it, it's because we're now gonna start taking our time and growing this bigger at this point. So again, just please single crochet all the way around in every stitch you find. Okay, let's begin round number nine and round number nine is two into the same one starting with two in the same one and then what we just do is we go six by themselves. So that's the configuration. So two and then six, two and then six. Let's uh, meet you back up at the end of this round. Let's begin round number ten. It's simply just single crochet all the way around. So not adding or subtracting, just single crochet. I'll see you in just a second. I'll move up to the next round. Let's start round number seven. First one is two into the same one and then we're going to do seven on its own. So that's your configuration, two and seven. And I'll see you in just a second. We'll move up to the next round. Okay, let's move up to round number 12. Round number 12, we are just going to single crochet into each one. So again, no big deal. Just please single crochet in each one and we'll come back all the way around and start again. Let's start off row number 13. In row number 13, we're gonna put two in the first one and then eight on its own. So please do that same thing, two and eight. And I'll meet you in just a moment when we come back all the way around. So now it becomes really easy because now for the next 10 revolutions, we're going to do one single crochet into each and this will take you from rounds number 14 
to 23. So I just need you to continue to rotate. Just make sure you check off that you're going around and just move up that stitch marker each and every time. So please do rounds number 14 to 23 right now and I'll see you in just a moment. And then we're gonna start doing some decreasing after that. So I have 14 to 23, rows 14 to 23 done. It looks uh, very unusual doesn't it? You have to keep in mind that crochet does stretch and so you're thinking to yourself that doesn't look right, just go with it. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna start doing um, um, decreasing at this point. So let's go for round number 23 or 24 sorry and we're gonna single cro uh, crochet two together and then single crochet um, the eight and next. So we're just gonna go one and then two so the first uh, two are together and then single crochet the, the next eight. So we're gonna start decreasing so every time you finish your eight you're gonna do the next two as two together and then another eight and continue to do that all the way around. Okay let's begin round number 25. 25 is very similar so we're just going to do two together and this time we are going to do seven single crochets then next and then two together and continue to do that same process all the way around. Let's move on to row number 26, round number 26, single crochet two together and then six on its own. So let's begin, so two together to begin with and then six single crochets on their own. Please continue that same pattern all the way around. Let's begin round number 27, 27 is two together and then single crochet into the next five. So let's begin one and two are together and then the next five are on their own. Continue that same pattern all the way around. Let's begin round number 28, 28 is two together and single crochet into the next four. So again the first two are together and then the next four are by themselves. So continue that all the way around and when we come back we're gonna start doing something slightly different because we're ready for the next process to go but do not fasten off and do not do anything until you hear back from me. So just uh, sit tight. So we just finished up round number 28 and basically you just need to pull a loop. Do not fasten off and essentially we need to start working on the interior before we can go any further and the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get our eye back and being able to attach it to your character. So what we have to do is that we have to look for rounds number six. So I counted back down and I put a stitch marker in here and then you have to find rows number 15. I just marking it instead of just kind of eyeing it out and then what I want to do is that I want to apply the eye and you have to make sure that the ridges are also facing out so don't put it upside down and what I want to do is that I want to have the up the upper eye and the lower eye matching within this time frame and the eye has to be an oval shape but oval in the horizontal. So not, uh, not like this but like this. So what I need to do is that I need to look for this and then to sew it but the eye just does not sit on this character. If you know Mike the monster he likes to um, have a big eye that pops out. So what I'm going to do before I sew is that I'm just going to apply not a lot but just enough stuffing so that when his eye is sitting on top that his eye will protrude outward which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to leave that for you. So you essentially have a large uh, uh, string now hanging from your eye and so you're just going to apply your darning needle in and then just sew it and try to get it to the best of your ability to match onto this character properly. Okay now that I have my eye attached I'm ready to attach the arms and so we're gonna use those you know, make sure <laughs> your thumbs are in the right location too that when you're attaching and we have to attach on round number 13. So if this was 15 here then I just counted backward on both sides and I just kind of eyeing it out as well and I put a couple stitch markers there so I understand where it is. So I'll, off camera I'm just going to put these together and sew it right into position before we continue and again make sure those those uh, thumbs are facing upward. Okay so this is what it looks like so far. I have my hands on and I have not stuffed the head yet but now it's time to bring on the legs and the legs we're gonna put on right now as well and we're gonna put those on round number 25. Just remember that we were finishing off in round number 28 and so you know with me and my fabulous stitch markers I wanna mark which ones those are. So if this is 28 
this 27, 25, <laughs> oh my God. I'm actually showing how great my math is. So 28, 27, 26, 25. So the legs are in the 25 area. So what I wanna just do is put a stitch marker here. And so I can mark it and I'm gonna do the same on both sides. And then I'm just gonna take a look at the picture exactly, see where they're attached and uh, attach those at this time. So continue to do that and attach your legs. Okay, so now I have my legs. <laughs> Look at the position. Um, now I have my legs in the position. I'll turn his legs over. And I have the arms attached. And now it's time for me to stuff the head. And you don't want to be cheap with it. So we really want to stuff it because you can see it still looks like a cone head right now. So let's uh, get him all worked out and start stuffing. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to bring on these nebbly things. The nebbly things were his horns. So let's give him some horns next. We're going to sew those on. Make sure you do stuff a little bit in here and attach. Just so you're aware, I really did stuff him like really stuffed him because you really do want to get rid of that cone head look. So you really have to get in there and don't be shy. Just really ram it up into the top so that you can get the nice shaping of the head just like so. Okay, so I have his horns attached, his legs are attached, his arms are attached. It's now just ready to finish off the body. Now, I want you to, like normally I would say, yeah, yeah, let's follow along, but this is really awkward even for me to film. So I'm gonna tell you to go and refer to the instructions. We've covered enough on how to be able to in single uh, crochet decrease, like two together. And what I want you to do is follow uh, rounds number 29 to 33. Make sure that you have enough stuffing in your, your body and then pull, to, uh, pull the tail together and weave off. I'm gonna really rely on you to finish this because um, it's, it's gonna be too hard to show you in order to keep it within the camera angle. So complete the finish off round number 29 all the way to 33 and then fasten it off together and then you basically have the body of your Mike the Monster. So here he is, he's fabulous. Now he's just ready for the final touches which includes some eyes which is the finishing of the eyes as well as a mouth and then he's complete. This has been so much fun. Okay, so while off camera, you can see that I have put the face onto my character and I've actually added a little graduation hat, which is a pattern that I've written. And for this tutorial reasons, I'm gonna just provide you those written instructions to be able to make one for yourself. And honestly, on the inside is just a cereal box just to make it square and absolutely fabulous. I did permanently attach it to the head, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So with the, the face, you're gonna require felt but in that, my case, I'm gonna have a little bit of a talent when it comes to yarn bombing and stuff. Now the teeth aren't perfect, but you know what? Nothing in life is perfect. But what she's provided is instructions to be able to make it with felt. Now you should know, I went to the Walmart and they have self-sticking felt. Don't even bother. This stuff absolutely does not stick to any kind of crochet. And as Stacy indicates that you'll want to get some crafting glue and be able to do that. So I could have done the eyeball, but I had the wrong, actually it doesn't look too bad in the monitor here, but it's the wrong um, color that I wanted. And so I end up getting an yarn bombed an eye. And basically I just did a circle and then just a couple of layers of the all in single crochet of the light blue. And really once I got it done, I just sewed it. Now you will notice that on the eye here, okay, there's a little bit of an, of an overlap. When I sewed it and I stretched it, I realized that I could see some of the white kind of bleeding through. It wasn't a perfect line. So all I just did is that I went around the eye and I just traced it with single crochet. Now this is not per the instructions. This is what I've done. And essentially I went around and I just provided a line around and then I went on a second round but every uh, few I went two together so that it would fold over. So basically, see, it's just kind of forcing it up. It's like kind of very much like an eye. And then with the mouth, what I did is that I actually created the felt first. See how much that would change it? <laughs> yeah, it actually looks like he's laughing there. And what I did is I used the shape of the mouth and I, I literally just stuck it to the material and then I traced it with single crochet and then basically took it off and then I did a black interior and then I did shells for teeth and I didn't put on his retainer. I also did the graduation hat and basically it's just a square piece like this 
and there is just a little tail with a tassel and then basically just um, single crochet is formed into a circle and then sewed to the underside of the hat and so um, a really easy uh, project to do. I really love doing this project and um, this has been a lot of fun so I look forward to seeing your creativity online. You just have to send us your entries when you get it done and of course every time you do a separate entry you'll want to do it. Now this little character will sit up on its own. It's fabulous. Um, the hands basically are really long but as you know the character he's all arms and legs and uh, but he's a little bit posable and I think he's a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank FreshStitches.com, Red Heart, as well as the Crochet Crowd for being able to put this tutorial together. Uh, without the team of the three of us, this would not be possible. And thank you so much, and we'll see you online soon. Bye-bye now. So that's it for today. We look forward to seeing your creativity available. Uh, just keep showing us on our Facebook pages, whether it's Fresh Stitches or whether it's the Crochet Crowd or even Red Heart. We would love to see your completed Mike the Monsters. Now you have until January 29th to submit in your actual finished uh, photos. So you have to submit those to thecrochetcrowd.com. There's a link in the more information of this video to be able to access to send us a picture of your final one. Now this is a lot of fun, fabulous and he is just waiting to give monster hugs. So on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com, on behalf of Red Heart, as well as Stacy over at uh, Fresh Stitches, thank you so much for participating. And until next time, if you love this concept, just uh, you drop us a line on our Facebook and we'll be sure to run another mystery crochet long in the near future. Until then, let's see.